Buongiorno YouTube, hope you guys are doing well. Can you guess where I am now? We're in the Vatican, the one and only, the one place that everybody wants to be, the beloved, beautiful Vatican with its illustrious buildings. Now you might be asking, why are all these chairs? Why are we sitting? Because today we are fortunate enough to see the one and only Pope Francis. I am super excited to see this guy. Um, heads up, I am not Catholic, for those of you who are wondering. I simply wanted to be able to have the chance to meet him because when am I, in my life, when am I going to be able to see this guy or any Pope for that matter? So I figured, why not take this chance, be here, we're in Rome, we have the time, we have the shot, let's get it. But anyways, YouTube, I hope you're excited as, just, as much as I am to see Pope Francis and the rest of the Vatican. Today should be an awesome day. Alrighty, so to enter the Vatican, you do have to reserve ahead of time. It's free. There are some websites. It was a little bit of research. You have to figure out the website. But you just basically, you put in a call for a ticket. You, you put in like, hey, I want to get a ticket. And then the Vatican will respond whether or not you can get a ticket. Basically, that's how it works. So if you get the ticket, great. If you don't, then that's it. That's all there is to it. You can't buy your way in. Anyways, I was lucky enough to get the ticket, as I said. We got here at 7 a.m. I had to wake up at like 5 to get here. So I'm, uh, it's going to be a long day. Anyways, the security check-in is ridiculous. It is astronomical i mean i know that it's the pope i get it but wow <laughs> it's worse than going through an airport like a thousand times worse so we we're waiting in line and there's a long line just to get in but once we got in they took away our water bottle they took away our empty like plastic bottle to refill with water they're just like nah you can't have this and then every time we go in through i'll show you guys so you can maybe see them, they're the guards kind of colored, different colors, one, one over there, Chogi. and then there's like the other guards, but they are really strict, <laughs> really mean. So at every step of the way, they're asking for your ticket, your ticket, your ticket, which, which again, I do understand it's the Pope, you gotta have security, but like, I pass one guard and like 10 meters, not even walking, another guard's like, hey, you got your ticket? I'm like, bro, are you? The guy just checked me. <laughs> but then what happened in like 10 meters? Uh, even going to the bathroom, they're like, no, nah, where, where's your ticket? I'm like, bro, please. Anyways, it, I, again, it, it's good security measure because again, it's the Pope, but man, it, it's pretty scary. It's really scary. But once we're sitting and we're, we're vibing, I think it's much better. But uh, I guess my tip is don't bring water because they're going to take it away from you. Even those, you're, you're, you know, even your precious Stanley Cup or whatever, they're gonna take that. They're gonna they're gonna take it. They can give it back to you, but you gotta get it back by 11 a.m. once you leave. And uh, that's really disheartening because uh, if you wanna be here all day, then you just have to leave. I, I don't know. I don't know. That really that really kind of sucks. I don't know what we're gonna do about that. Anyways, now we're just being chilling, waiting for the Pope. Alrighty, YouTube. While we're waiting, I got this uh, nifty little pocket coffee. So. They took away my water, but they didn't take away my coffee for whatever reason. But I got this little nifty guy. Fuck coffee. I'm so excited. It's normal kyokta. It's super cute. I've been excited because I heard about this before I came to Italy and I always wanted to, well, always, I really wanted to try it since I got here. But it's a uh, pocket coffee, espresso to go. When you need to go to work, pocket coffee. When you're in the car, pocket coffee. When you're at home, pocket coffee. Anyway, let's try it out. So you can see they have the straw already attached for you. So we'll try to poke that out. And then they have a little hole here for you to kind of poke into. Ah, nice. All right, let's give it a shot. Ooh, that's really good. Jincha coffee mug. It's really, really coffee flavor. But with that hint of chocolate, which is super nice, it's a little sweet, but you can you can taste the coffee, which is really good. But it's not a lot. It's it's really pocket coffee to go. It's really espresso to go. I think I've I've finished it off. But um, I think it was uh, two euros for a box of three of them. So it's pretty good. Not bad. I like it. I don't know if it's uh, going to be the same as like a actual espresso to drink, but it's good. All right, YouTube, you can maybe see him. He's in his Pope mobile. There he is. I'm trying to zoom in for you. 
There he is. There's the Pope. You can see him there. Here he comes, YouTube. Pope Francis. Pope Francis. Pope Francis on his way. Maybe we can get something blessed. There he is. La fuerza humana es la fibra moral. Mena i valori estimati. Distrugge la voglia di vivere e di contribuire a una società migliore. Questo fa l'abuso di droga. Et melos inducas in tentazione. Just finished. Oh, it's very hot, first off, sorry. It's uh, burning in the sun. But uh, it was very fun. Well, I, I, fun is probably not the right word. It was very interesting. It was very cool. Got to see the Pope nice and close. I We didn't get any of the stuff blessed. I think now we possibly can, but I don't actually have a uh, religious item on me. I just have my, my grand, great grandma's necklace and I, I don't think he blesses those. I think he only blesses religious items. But uh, the sermon, I wouldn't really call it a sermon. It was uh, what he talked about today was uh, it was very cool. Talked about uh, basically the war on drugs. You know, just uh, drugs are bad. We need to fight against drugs. Prayers to those who are going through that suffering and prayers to those who helped those who are suffering and that kind of stuff. So it was, it was a good, uh, again, not sermon, uh, but good speech, good speech today. And uh, basically he sits down, he speaks in Italian, and then there's a couple of translators that go through a couple of different main languages like French, English, German. Uh, Arabic, like just kind of some big languages. He has those translators go through the same thing he said, basically in Italian. And then, uh, yeah. And then now he's kind of blessing up all the people and all their things. So uh, it, was a, it was an interesting experience, but uh, not one I would do again. This was a one-time thing. It was cool. It would have been nice if we could get something blessed or be a little bit closer, maybe a picture with the Pope would be fantastic, but we got to see him pretty close. And uh, that was nice, and I got it on video, so you guys can see them for yourself and see it on, on YouTube over here. There's one thing that still bothers me, though, is that they, they took the water bottles. I mentioned that earlier, but I saw other people with water bottles, and I don't really know why they specifically took ours for, for whatever reason. I, I'm still kind of bothered by that. That kind of grinds my gears, so to speak. I don't know why they did that, so now we're left with no water, having to buy another one. Security is super tight, but now that that uh, now that that speech is done, and the Pope is done doing his stuff. We're gonna walk around and go to the Saint Basilica. Is the one that we have for today. All right, let's go check it out. All right, YouTube, new plan. We are walking outside the Vatican area. It's literally right next door to the Vatican area. We're just kind of walking the streets. Um, the Basilica, which I was lined up in line for for a little bit, is very long and two it's not open till 1 p.m so we would have to wait in that line for four hours and then wait to get inside so we decided nope we'll come back and check around 12 12 30 i guess to see where the line's at uh, but i can only assume that the line is going to be even longer so i'm not sure we're going to go see the st basilica because it's it's like all day it's all day just to go visit the same place go. so we're gonna walk around now show off the outer streets of the vatican and uh kind of uh, enjoy our time we are walking back to Rome well where the Pantheon is around the, the the central city of Rome thought about it it's, I don't think it's gonna be worth it to, to wait for the St. Basilica for two reasons one it's not open till one so we got four hours till then two 
even when it is open, the line's gonna be they get longer, it's gonna be much longer. So we're probably gonna be there waiting, I don't know, two hours just to get inside. And I wanna show off more of Rome than just waiting and uh, waiting in line, baking in the sun. So I'm very sorry, YouTube, for not being able to go to the same Basilica. Maybe another time where we don't go see the Pope. I think the highlight enough was just seeing the Pope. That was enough for me. And uh, you know, Vatican, so-so. I think it's not that worth it unless you got a lot of time on your hands. I think it's better to just visit central Rome, walking around the streets, getting some good food and uh, that kind of stuff. I don't really recommend the Vatican too much unless you're going to go see the Pope and maybe then maybe it'll be worth it. Anyways, I'll see you in central Rome for lunchtime. Alrighty, YouTube, we are at our lunch destination. You can see the hundreds of people behind me eating sandwiches. That is where we're getting. We're getting the Primo sandwich, and it's something that people are waiting in line for hours. Well, maybe 30 minutes or so to get the sandwich. Let me show you. We are at Arantico Vinayo. I don't know if I said that right, but there are two of them, which is very funny. They're just right across the street from each other. But apparently the sandwiches here are absolutely amazing. So we'll go ahead and try it. There are some famous sandwiches they have. Prices also seem to be very good. I'm very excited to try it out. So let's get in this super long line. The restaurant now it is hectic, but they're working hard on the sandwiches. Sandwiches! Our sandwiches, it was very quick. I mean, the line itself was pretty long, but they get you in and out. Basically, you look at the menu, you ask what you want, you get what you want, and then they're like, all right, we got, got your order, go pay. <laughs> we go down the line, I think like two seconds later, three seconds later, our tops, the guy's like, hey, you, you ordered the sandwich? I was like, yeah, <laughs> it was like two seconds ago. Uh, anyways, we paid, this was 22 euros for two, so about 10 euros or so a sandwich. The bread is very warm, so I think it's the focaccia bread. I got the Italian one, which has prosciutto, uh, some cheese, pesto I think was in there as well. This is the special summer edition, so let's give it a, uh, give it a bite. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, look at that, you can see the cheese in there. It's the most delicious so. Oh. Mm. Okay. Oh, you too. Do you guys a favor? Wait in line for the sandwich. It's not that bad. What's it waiting? Oh yeah. This is the, uh, I don't remember the name, but this has roast beef, cheese. Like truffle. Maybe some truffle, olive oil. Mm -hmm. Oh. No more stuff. No more stuff. Mmm. I'm a prosciutto guy, so I'm, I'm happy with mine. All right. Italiano better. You can taste the arugula, you can taste all the ingredients very well. It's a pretty beefy sandwich as well. So if you think you can't handle, I think it's 30 centimeters, a sandwich, you could share with a friend, but uh, I'm not the sharing kind of guy. like my sandwich. All right, YouTube, we just finished our delicious lunch. But it's a, a little salty and uh, I'm a little thirsty. So uh, what can you do when you're thirsty in Rome and you really need a drink and you don't want to pay the two euros or 250 euros it takes to drink water? Well, let me show you. All right, YouTube, all over Rome, there's these wonderful fountains where you can fill up your water bottles with fresh, refreshing, delicious cold water. Well, semi cold, but refreshing nonetheless. And it is clean. It's from the Alps or the mountains, wherever they say it's from. I don't know, I trust the Romans, right? They drink here. But there is a very Xingye method to do it. Nanan, Mugi Marayo. Okay. 
So you guys might be able to see there's a small hole up here. So if I plug in the water, bam. Fresh water, just like that. All right, after walking around, having some lunch, drinking some water, fresh water. I need something sweet to fill up the body with energy because we've been walking a lot. So we're gonna go to this place. It, apparently one of the top three gelato places of all time. Gelati, over here. Inside looks very, very nice and uh, very cool, but uh, I'm very picky with ice cream, so we'll see how good it is. This is the inside. I don't think I'm recording. It's a bit hectic, but it's very pretty inside. Very, very nice shot of the place. And then we can see all of the gelato. That's right, YouTube, they don't just do gelatos, they also do. Very delicious pastries. All right, we got our yummy gelato. We got four flavors. We got strawberry, blackberry, oh, raspberry, and watermelon. Those are the ones that we got. Looks super yum. And uh, let's dig into it. It's very melty, so I'd go fast. I think this is the watermelon one here. Holy crap. Chincho watermelon flavor. Holy crap. It is so good. Sorry, I'm going very fast because I don't want it to melt. This is the... Uh, I think this is the black uh, the blackberry one. Very delicious. Over here, this is the raspberry. Oh, I'll take my stuff. Hold on. All three. One, two, three. Mmm. Normally, I go for chocolate or coffee or something in between, like pistachio. But the fruit flavors are absolutely amazing. Tastes exactly as they should, like blackberry is blackberry, watermelon is watermelon, raspberry is raspberry. Super delicious. I highly, highly recommend coming to this place. Sorry, YouTube, we're going fast because I want to eat it before it melts. See you in a little bit. It's been a long, long day. Well, it's only maybe two or three o'clock in the, in the afternoon, but for me, very, very long day. So we got one last spot today, very kind of out of the place little place. We're going to stick our hands in a hole. The mouth of truth. Or jam our fist in it. I'm just kidding. We're just gonna we're just gonna do the whole mouth of truth thing. Test it out. Have a little bit of fun. It's in the shade and uh, it's free. So let's go ahead and check it out. Here we are. Mouth of truth. You guys can kind of see it over there. We're gonna get well after this long line. We should be able to uh, get pretty close. Alrighty, YouTube. We are at the mouth of truth. Time to see if our hand is gonna get cut off or not. Ooh, scary. Very scary. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, we're good. We're good. Just finished the hand of truth. That was fun. It was a quick little thing to do. If you got time, I would definitely recommend. The guy who was there, at least, you know, taking pictures of everyone was super nice. Even uh, spoke in Korean. No more chareo. Anyways, when you, uh, after you're done taking pictures, they do ask for well, they don't really ask, but there's little boxes you can put some coins for, for offering or donation, I should say. And then you enter a church. I didn't want to record the church because I never feel comfortable recording churches, really. But uh, it was pretty cool. It was a nice, it was a nice, nifty little experience. For those of you who are curious about uh, information, what the, the mouth of truth is, uh, it's supposed to be a god named Fauno, F-A-U-N-O, Fauno. He's supposed to be the representative god of harvest and premonition. So many people worshipped him to make sure that they had good harvest for the year. And uh, something I found very, very interesting, they used to sacrifice goat and milk in, uh, in his name. I guess he's one of the lesser known gods. He is a small god nonetheless. Anyways, fun little story of why it's called the Mouth of Truth is because there was a guy who was not sure about his uh, wife's fidelity, whether she was cheating on him or not. So he asked that... Uh, he asked basically that she put her hand in this hole of truth, for the most part, in front of everyone. So she said, uh, okay. But she was very smart about it. Because, well, in the story we know that she cheated, but in truth, what she did is that she professed in front of a bunch of people. And uh, she pretended to be insane, and some random guy hugged her to like calm her down. So then she professed to everybody that no man, except my husband, has ever embraced me, including this crazy guy. She put her hand in, no problem. 
also it goes, goes to show that even <laughs> even back then you could lie about it and still get away with it. Anyways, I think the reason why the hand cutting off was a thing was because there might have been some official behind the rock that would cut it. But uh, I don't really know much more than that. All I know is that uh, it is a god. He is the god of harvest and uh, it's a circle because it's supposed to be like a sun, I guess. Anyways, I think we're done for today in Rome. Anyways, YouTube, we're going to head on back to the hotel, take a break, and go for some dinner later. So I'll see you then. See you in a bit.